my name is Valerie Paul, and uh, I teach at the business school in Vienna, so I think it's my first business. 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 I think it's Right, so uh, the title is kind of impressive, maybe it sounds a little bit of an action. So it was focused on the world for sort of expectations, but it might, so it can't play any too much. So, speaking of motivation, <laughs> and basically this work is about uh, contests that uh, literally happen in a variety of business uh, situations. And I think we may focus on the contests that are um, of, uh, that have or the games that are non-transitive, how it's called, non-deterministic and uh, non-power. So these are all the non-jets, but the data, future center, and the center experience. So, yeah. There are two terms of which are said, and these are those clinics that are in the same way. That is probably not my question, but it's a great thing to And these questions are basically simple. We want to understand how people behave in those kind of test like situations. So we characterize them. And we may have those two games just like we have now, and we have this going on, it's not a bad game. So you can see those things as well. And then test the predictions. Just to see how people are going to behave like how people are going to behave like how If you want to think about, so I can make you a reasonable, maybe more specific about the kind of situations that are very close to the model. That would be, say, the competition between managers of these two branches of the chain uh, restaurant. So the two branches, they are identical. It's two McDonald's restaurants. They have the same price. They have the same size. <coughs> uh, the same everything. You want to want uh, is going to be the same. The one is going to be random. Very strong request to do that. So that's the kind of ideal case scenario, what is called everything else being equal. So, what makes the difference? Uh, that's what you're going to find out in the way. How and uh, what makes that a contest is that, well, these are two branches sitting here, right? But eventually, one of those managers is going to be appointed as a district manager. So from a branch manager to a district manager. And the assumption is that, well, the company, you know, what kind of, they can look at the performance of these two restaurants and come to the company that projects. So whoever makes the client project, well, that guy's going to be the district manager at some point. Right? So and that's, that's the context. Uh, <coughs> Well, the location there is basically the same block. It's a market street uh, in San Francisco, and uh, it really there less than five years. It's probably three minutes, three minutes walk between the two restaurants. Between two restaurants. Yeah. So, what is that I'm going to use? <coughs> Uh, transitivity, non-transitivity, deterministic context, and non-deterministic. So transitivity, oh, you know, it's a property that says that if uh, B is greater than A and C is greater than B, then C is also greater than A. So that's a transitive relation. So the relation is non-transitive if uh, and B is greater than A, C is greater than B, but a turns out to be a So there's some kind of cycle. 
This room is also used for video conferencing and the phone on the screen. Sometimes there's a pop up video saying you have a video you can call. Examples of non transcript uh, Now, if you go back to the previous slide, the transitive and non transitive relations were defined with respect to how don't you observe from the same set in the page. Now, when we talk about non transitive games, the relations are defined between strategies that belong to different ways. So, <coughs> In this case, say, uh, paper gets rock, and when you say, well, paper gets rock, it's uh, considerable. If you play rock and I play paper, I beat you. I beat you. So, but then, scissors get paper. If you play uh, paper, I play scissors, I beat you. But then eventually, the rock also gets uh, scissors. So that's an example of non transitive game, and it's determinist. So, the rock always makes this. Now, here's the scissors come together. Uh, another example <coughs> um, an all play option. Right, so, the all play option works as well. Like that. Because on the, you can get any number of cells from 0 to 100 cells, which is a dollar. And the object is a one dollar amount. Right, so, it so was so because, say, uh, Simultaneously make our bids, but then the thing is that well, if the first bid gets the object, both players play the bids. Now, if the community bid, it was a bid, or always get where the first bid, that person gets the object. Now, among the deterministic games, an example is a non transitive dice. Well, it's kind of an uh, artificial mark 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 for the last of our days. Did you, did you, did you? Uh, I don't know, I, I didn't know about it. Yeah, what I, no, 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 I, I, I'm curious to know more. What I, oh, yes. Right, so the, 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 Preference relation, if you think about uh, choosing these uh, different times, uh, different times, uh, uh, strategies, then uh, I forgot, which is interesting, B, it's A, C, it's B, probability A, and uh, A, it's C. So in each case, the probability of uh, winning is 5 over 9. So what I read on the internet about this uh, game is that. Uh, your gains, I'll see your acquaintance, the process of the business. Your gains once went to Warren Buffett, to Warren Buffett. I don't know if it's too much. It's not too much to suggest you to wear this game. So he gave you three, but as he said, well, two, just. Whatever you want. 
the iTunes that is really good. And where are you? It's a... I don't know. You wouldn't choose something. No, no, no. But, 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 so the idea is that you're wrong with whatever, uh, so the first mover, whatever the first mover chooses, in this case, the second mover has an advantage for all the part of the line, but the base scale is uh, just like paper, scissors, only the base scale. Three options, not the most uh, contest. And <coughs> the one we are going to, uh, we are starting here on the end of this uh, paper, is that this is a contest. <coughs> Into that. So, any questions so far? So, the New Zealand problem. Uh, New Zealand problem is a classic single period here in the American problem. It was introduced by Edwards in 1988. And Edwards was uh, trying to figure out what is the uh, amount of cash that a uh, bank available for customers, uh, for customer distributors. So, so many customers may show up on a given day, uh, and if the bank doesn't have enough cash, they are going to be in trouble, they may lose customers, so there is something. Uh, of course, they don't need customer to be. On the other hand, if you hold too much cash, well, you are not earning any increase in the cash that is still here, but so it is cost of paying too much cash. And the, so in the, in the context, uh, you know, let's say, the, even more, maybe, the classic interpretation of the problem is that there is a news boy, so a person who is selling newspapers in each one of that person needs to uh, decide how many newspapers to get from the publisher. Early in the morning, when it's dark, other people are still speaking. How many newspapers to get? I want to sell them uh, at fixed price B, regardless of how many people should have the price is fixed. The unit uh, cost is also fixed on as the price that the newspaper pays to the publisher. And the demand is random. So it's a long time when people should show up. It may, it may be random, maybe not. We don't know. Right. So, questions how many units? to buy from the publisher in order to maximize this paper. Well, the solution, you can, it was in any case that is uh, calculate your expected profit. <coughs> I can call for my credit or email your credit. Uh, you can differentiate the expected profit. Uh, but but uh, really the easiest way is just to look at the first order conditions directly and say, use the same uh, uh, favorite approach, marginal revenue equals to marginal cost. Now, the marginal cost in, in this case is just <coughs> a marginal in terms of the number of units. So they define the marginal instead of the uh, variable interest is the number of units. And the idea is that, well, suppose we already have Q units in stock uh, for two reasons. And we decide whether we should uh, order a buy from the publisher one year. So in this case, it's optimal. And uh, the way we figure out what it's worth to the world, we can assume that we can only sell that extra buy from the unit once we sell the original Q units here. So that means that the chance that we are going to sell that unit is the tail probability of the tail function with of Q. <coughs> and that's, that gives you the marginal value. That's how it works. <coughs> Price times the probability that you are going to see demand greater than Q. And the marginal cost of the economic uncertainty is just the value of Price that you pay for the so, an example, we use in the study, uh, in the experiments, uh, 
which is the span of the kind of thing, which we call to C to be 40 to 1. Uh, is there a span of, let's say, often the city price equals, equals 4, plus D equals 1, and then the optimal number of years is 75. So there's going to be price to here. It's easy to characterize that it's just a parabola. So that's what we have. Any questions on it? And this problem, so why it is a problem? Because it happens pretty much everywhere. So as you want to analyze one of the problems that are called this graph situation question, let's say an example is this boy or people could sell flowers, fresh cut flowers. Uh, pretty much everything that has a uh, uh, characteristics of a single period product. So there is no tomorrow. So your product is going to expire. Your, your product is going to perish. So you have uh, fresh cut flowers that are going to be to last for long. They are due to the product. In this case, well, in this case, we kind of implicitly assume a uh, perfect computation because it's a low price to fix. Uh, so it's right. So it's a little size of the So it's No. No, the drama is that you get concealed that you just use the numbers, and in those models, they limit to find the price, you find that you can be also stuck at court, so you don't slide your spaces, you can be really complex, and it makes it interesting enough. But the thing about all those models is just to jump the head a little bit, is that they normally or the way most of us can be, they basically still demand for each other. Or they sometimes they say, if I didn't stock enough, and my, on my part, uh, there is too much demand, then there is big, there will be demand for uh, getting all over four to get a spin of Right, so you know, this, that's right, it's just, that's correct. So, but, uh, Start at the line, just explain the basic set. So, if you think about uh, this kind of scenarios, another possibility of large scale in the example would be human packer. So, what they do for many categories of products, when they uh, so decide to start making a sort of model, they actually stockpile the sub assembly of the raw material, uh, raw materials for that particular model like for a year in advance. They make only one same decision. They have no idea what demand is going to be. They are facing uncertainty, all of them the future for sure. So they make that decision under uncertainty and so have a big impact decision. Now, uh, this model, a uh, simple model, simple explanation, much more than equals money, of course. So, what uh, was the last one concerned, one was it that, well, anyway, so two interesting people, they brought that model and tested it in the lab, just to see how people are going to do, because that's actually a very important practical problem. It's important to understand how people are actually. Go to make decisions on this. So they know that and they think about it. Uh, I think about it. You know, if you know that market will give you this market cost money, where I'm not making optimal decisions. So the average efficiency of the average growth is only 85% of the maximum growth. And only, surprisingly, only about 10% of the participants were able to make optimal decisions. Now, the participants will. The pay students for MIT. And they were in the second year in PAs, and they had, they started this problem in the first year. 
this is just simple replications of the same problem of closing the fire chains, maybe the normal level is about to explain that. But it's done, it's just like a new one. So, minimizing, and uh, if you think about the one chips, or if you suppose more exactly the past demand realization, then on average, on average, your average order will be 15. Right? Because the new demand is 15, so the average is going to close to 15. That, that explains, and it, that's how the demand chips can explain the whole thing. So, similarly, uh, there are people trying to minimize that's post in the product era. So they place this large group and the demand is small. They say, oh, I just have a lot too much. I have so much on this unsold stuff. I should make this kind of one. And so, yeah, similar to the one JSON kind of simple mechanics. Or confidence is uh, really a model that says, well, people really don't appreciate the way I did it. And it's a problem generally that they deal with my own methods. And instead of, uh, so, I think it's probably for the amount of money which you can't pay effectively, or what they act as though they're solving the problem with uniform demand, say, 25 to 75. So, that kind of squeezes everything to the center. I'm talking about the quantity of some of the center. So, they are overconfident in how much credibility or how well they can predict what is the most. Uh, well, the question, one of the problems that we don't have there is but still find to know is that actually ultra standard exists only in the 50% of all that they actually receive is lie outside of that ultra standard zone. <coughs> and uh, all the theories, and also what we are doing in this research, the only try to explain. Decisions that fall in ultra center, but we realize that most of the time decisions go somewhere. Uh, uh, <coughs> so I mentioned that there were different studies, and that's how the typical results look like in terms of the uh, efficiency of the decisions. So all the time there is some improvement in the efficient centers. In this case, there are people playing for a couple of periods, so there is some learning. Slow, I guess we can get a little better, but not quite too much. So, interestingly, also, that uh, <coughs> people turned all kinds of strange things. So, in this particular experiment, about 60% of people were all in the original quantity. So, they feel that you know, uh, they don't get 25 to 30 percent simply all that they need to have. That's all really, that's all the things you want to that's the thing. I'm sorry we didn't get to the model yet, I just did all this again. So, uh, now, some people uh, believe that future demand is positively correlated with the past realization. And some people believe that, and again, it's a bit more substantial numbers, like 25% of those, 25% of other people. So, all kinds of things. And, uh, yeah. and uh, they're going to, at the top of that, you're going to study competition of people in this world. So, already understanding what people do in our competition uh, is not easy to ask at the core, which into, it's going to start, it's, it's going to make sense. Now, in this problem, we are looking at these two newsletters who can meet. And just like those uh, store managers, the branch managers, they can't be, they want to maximize their profit. But also, they can be for this price and the size alpha. That's their bonus. So if you remember this one about the promotion to the district manager, well, that's the bonus promotion to the district manager. Which happens with the probability. Well, that's see, their eye may start with the or quite small. So that's the standard 
follow the prophet's decision. The only have is the prophet. That's what we talked about so far. I will start to the more material theories. Uh, that can be, that can be, not because of any kind of uh, international sentiment, but they must be called, so I put this uh, much, and some of my customers go to you, the other way, but in this case, the amount of music is just completely separated, they are perfectly isolated, and the only way they can be is through not through bodies, but through the bodies. No, that depends on the organization. So here we're looking at the organizations. So think about it this way. We are just playing for one in one one period. And depending on who you inspire what is going to be promoted. So if you are dealing with this uh what we're doing is it's actually an indicated function. Right, and then when we change the expectation, it becomes the Cool, so any questions about this? That's really the normal application. And this game has uh, a key property is uh, non positivity. So, basically, what it says is that if suppose, just think about it this way, if we have a order, the order maximizes. Here, that's most of the top, people here. Then, say, my opponents, or more than that, could be better off by ordering slightly less. Right? And if uh, the ultimate order was 75, that's a better example. And my opponent would order 74, 4999. Then, they would win this probability. So, moving just a little bit closer to the center, it's also the job of the probability of the is it's continuing to be. So, you draw, suppose, I go to 75, and it's simply much the order. Then, well, you define under the best cases. But if you want well, just a little bit less, you get the probability for two million, you got a set of one. And because of this, this, this slightly less, it's this and so on. Uh, because of this uh, discontinuity, there is a non positivity relation. So each quantity fits the quantity slightly higher until a certain point. Because if you go all the way to the infinite, then you need to be expected to become so small or be a person who sacrifices that much of the world that you actually raise something back uh, to the expected to the profit price of the world. So it calls to that. Which one? Oh, it's, it's constant. No, no. The, the markets are isolated. Customers have no idea what this competition. From the customer perspective, it's not a competition. It's only in the minds of its managers. So, what we're doing is I'm characterizing the video the dynamic of the study game and the, the, the dynamic game. I'm sure one scenario, there could be two equilibria are possible. There is a one equilibrium in which okay, so the ultimate order is 75, but uh, equilibrium can be something like 69 and slightly less. Slightly less, but it's very well built in the You get the objective. And the other thing here, if you look at the years, what you'll see the picture here is that the first order orders will be close to the medium, or the second order of the third. So, what does it want? Try to compensate the third 
what we did.
we are trying to sell the paper, we are kind of trying to make a reference to our employee compensation in Asia. So, if I have two minutes, I can go back to the yeah. So, the study two, the motivation for the study two comes from this. Uh, that kind of content, and as, as we are going to see, it actually, uh, well, as we already saw, it is that kind of provision that actually has profits, respective profits. And uh, you see now, well, this is a different problem, but uh, in some of the similar contests, there is a basically vertical competition between the supplier and the retailer, and what uh, work and work. Uh, we try to accomplish, they try to see how increasing social preferences uh, may affect the uh, efficiency of the supply chain. So in this case, that is just a lot of competition. They are declaration, supply, they are very different companies, but the point was that uh, they had a comfort in which they did not. Then they had a spouse in relationship in which they were the same. The participants all you know, this time you may have a problem for uh, your partner. And there was a relationship, a uh, condition in which they said in the beginning, uh, this is the prime people. So well, imagine that the person you're doing this uh, is a friend. Well, no, you know, just come to the person, show your friends. So, so that's what they don't have as a result. So if you look at the status relationship, so what you see on this chart is the efficiency of supply and supply chain, and you can the status relationship is actually supposed to be the same. status condition is small, and the relationship condition is the highest. So the competition here is destructive. The stress project is but you can count on that. Yes, that's going to be the same as the first issue of the week. So that was our motivation for production samples. So in the experiment, uh, now in study one, let's use an example of this. You can do the field of readings. And what we've done, remember, um, uh, when I was taking to center, I mentioned several models that can explain who to center. So those are potential factors that are driving this kind of And the models here, we wanted to control for all of them and really keep all of the competitors. And we were also going to ask why they won't be control for all of them. And therefore, what we've done, we, uh, this is the that's pretty much a standard newsletter kind of experience. People know my tattoo now, just like you were talking about before. They know the price, cost information. Uh, in the history table, they just the feedback they receive. Past three months and period one. Uh, this is your post and period one. Now, the key thing that we've done was what the object things. First, we introduced a reference point. A player from the past experience. So that player was not even present in the lab during the study. So it was, it was indeed so that the two data for the real person who indeed made those decisions and the demands and the demands and the demands and the demands So the same conditions were replicated and they were saying that, well, in the same conditions, some player from the past experience did make this decision. Just in four or eight, five years. And that's what our subjects need. And second, uh, that's how they control. So, first of all, they use country to see the reference point that they input. And second, how they control for everything else. But the first thing we want to try is to control is uh, we restricted the choice of all the quantities one more, one less than the reference point. And I want to see it. Right, and uh, the way we manipulate, so what we manipulate is one of the experiments. 
uh, was the number of columns in the history table. So up to a certain number of periods, we will then introduce the next column that shows the other players with it. Not saying anything about the mask of the other. Not saying that you know, years after another 15 periods, uh, we then introduce another column in which we do make comparison of the props and say, oh, you actually make hard work here to learn. And then finally, under the first manipulation, we introduce another uh, column in which we explicitly all the value of bonds. In that case, was 50 tokens. <coughs> so that's what we've got. <coughs> Pretty much more ready for the beginning. So that's a result of a logistic regression. And it shows how likely, how more likely it is for people to make a product closer to the and already in the uh, so intercept shows the baseline condition in which we just show the order of the past player. And that uh, value of the result is positive. It's more likely for people to choose work to work to close it. Right from the start. And then as we in these calculations, well, the size of the effect increases. But uh, in the second part, it's not statistically significant, but and that's what the data looks like. We didn't have very many um, sort of decisions made by the past plan, which we call the law of the So the circle, the size of the circle, uh, represents the number of observations in the application. So that's what we see, what we see here. Else, uh, of course, not uh, what people try to say. Um, yes, indeed, most people do call this photo set, just show this photo set, and some people show it exactly the opposite. Uh, so they have uh, pulled us away from the development of the project. In study two, that's the uh, I can get picture. The beginning of the five years. That, that's what we basically uh, done in study two. Uh, in the second study, that they could do a little bit much of it. So we also. But we just think that if, if these two choices, then should be able to argue, uh, to make a stronger argument that 